I've been lucky enough to always have this in my back garden. Currently, this is a one mile long UTV buggy track. And by the end of this video, we're hopefully gonna convert into a full blown rally car track just like the ones you see on TV. So here is our plan. In 2002, I bought a derelict farm. The owner, who was the farmer, unfortunately died. I bought the house at auction. Now the trouble is that skinned me out and I didn't have a penny left to renovate it. So I bought myself a static caravan for 200 quid and built myself a motocross track. Priorities. This is the current track sat on rock hard clay, but depending on the weather, it can be the perfect material to work with one day and a nightmare the next. The track is currently spread across three fields and in total that's 14 acres and over a mile long. It's the perfect canvas with infinite possibilities. And when the track is finished, we are going to take round a very special car. It's a car which looks just like this, which was driven by this absolute legend. Sounds like this and it's called the RX43, but it's a secret until the end. So for now, let's break this down into smaller sections. Track one, two, three, and four. For now, we're gonna tackle this bit here, track one. And it's actually the first bit of track I ever built nearly 20 years ago. It's the perfect starting point for this epic project. We're going to start on this corner here. This may be the most problematic corner of the whole entire track. However, we have come up with a solution to make this the perfect corner of the track. So let me introduce you to the team. First of all is the digger man, Kurt. He has 10 years experience of diggering, but he's also known as nine and three quarters because he lost the end of his finger fighting off a crocodile. Well, that's what he told me anyway. This is Jay McCann, designated cup of tea maker. This is Senna Rose McCann, designated health and safety executive. And this is Reese, camera operator and really good looking guy. And then this is me, Mark McCann, complete full-time liability. So first of all, let's check the condition of the ground as this is super important. At the minute, this is perfection. There's a little bit of movement in it. It's like putty, great for molding, and it's not too wet and not sloppy. So fingers crossed, if we have that weather with us on our side, we will have a fantastic day one of the track build. Lovely. Turned out right, innit? Pointless. Now it'd be all right. Pointless. Come on, let's crack on. Positive thinking. Oh, someone's got some. When we were over there, it's just going to spin. Like these are rubber tracks, clay field, no traction. Just, I'm just going to spin. Yeah, but I've got an event door around there without any problems. I told you it wouldn't work. She'll be fine. Come on, she'll be fine. <laughs> meant to be fixing the track, not making it worse. It's actually quite soft, isn't it? How long did it rain for? As you can see, as soon as the ground gets wet, the clay gets soft and slippy. You have to stop the build or the digger will get stuck. Hopefully we have warm enough weather until the summer ends in around September. That's the window to get this entire project finished. After that date, we run the big risk of having to push this build back till next year, which will be an absolute disaster. So with it established that we're not going to be able to get much done today, we needed to come up with a game plan. Here is the problem. My buggy is a racetrack wrecker. With so much power and big knobby tyres, it pushes dirt to form wheel track ruts, which cars get stuck on. And then when it rains, these compacted troughs fill with water. That's deep. Told That's you. Problem. And because of the dirt being pushed to the side, there are massive mounds and ledges. So you even have to risk your life just mowing it. <laughs> oh, run! Now this needs to be fixed. We have to drain the water, fill in the ruts, and then bring back the pushed out dirt to reform the field's original shape. We then compact it down by tracking it in with the heavy digger, leaving a smooth flat surface ready to race a car on. Now the downside is obviously that puddle's there and that's gonna take a long time to go. So we've had an idea, we're gonna put a trough across there and at least try and get the water out and then we'll fill that back in afterwards. So that's nearly gone now, look. Fingers crossed what's left of them, that, uh, <laughs> that we've got a dry day tomorrow. Day one of track build complete. Oh well, it is what it is. I did say it wouldn't work. Yeah. Day two, we have no rain. Um, all the fish are gone. 
um, it's sort of drained quite well. So this is it, the very, very first bucket of this amazing flat build. And it's day two already. <laughs> So the first thing that needs to be done today is we need to scrape the wet mud off the top of the ground. Then we will have a solid base to work on. To the very end. House bricks. Love them around the tyres. Meanwhile. Come back down again, you. But mommy will tell me, off she is all the way up there. Here comes Hi. mommy. Quick, here comes mommy. <laughs> oh, Want to do some mud? Yeah. I've actually nearly finished it. Yeah. I might as well knock it on the head. Yeah. I'll go in for the day. Thank you. Right, brilliant. See, See you when it's finished. finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How come you're so dirty? Now I climb on a roof, now I'm all dirty. You climbed on a roof? Yeah. What roof? The ambulance. Oh, good work. <laughs> I want to know why she's climbing on an ambulance roof. Right? Oi, you weren't supposed to tell Mummy about the roof. Because it's not a secret. It, no, it was a secret because you're getting into trouble. Now, Mum is going to be angry with Daddy. Muddy shoes? No, no well, yeah, muddy shoes as well, actually. It's dead. Don't make the problem worse. Next up is once Kurt has removed any soft mud off the top, is to compact everything into the ground to create a nice, strong base. Now, while Kurt was doing this, he came across a land drain. A land drain is basically a network of pipes that farmers put under the ground to pull the water away from the middle of the field. This will stop the water from gathering in puddles. Now, if one of these land drains are broken or get clogged up, this could be the cause of puddles gathering in random areas in the field, which might explain why this bottom corner is always full of water. So Kurt dug a hole to see what he could find and he'll let us know later in the video. And then, because at that moment the track is way too narrow for a car, he starts to widen the track and at the same time he is smoothing out the edge of the track, making it safer to mow. It's that's lovely in there. Bang on. There was just a land drain in this corner here. I think that's why that was so much of a swamp. You can just about see the, the end that I've left exposed. So what's happened then is we broke the land drain there and it's sat with the water in it. That's why I've done a little bit of a sump here. It looks a bit of a mess, but that's what all this is here. When you clear that out, the water just sits there constantly running. But it's not a problem anyway, because if we get the right gradient on this, this is going to slope that way. That's what yeah. I'm just trying to do now. So now to bring the level of the track up. Kurt is bringing in the mud from the edge of the track that the buggy has pushed out there and then tracking it in to make it nice and strong. To successfully track in the mud, it has to be dry because if it was wet, the tracks would just push the mud to the side and it wouldn't actually compact in. For sake, day two. Just keep going, we're gonna be all year. Yeah. Where do you want the pond? <laughs> Look how wet it's gone in them few minutes. Honestly. Honestly, that's why I've just turned my revs right up and I'm tracking up and down like a madman. Now, the trouble is, it's super important for Kurt to be able to track in the ground because without it, the water would just sit underneath the surface and the problem would just reoccur. Plus, the ground won't be very hard. But after about an hour of Kurt battling through the rain, progress was finally being made and now the track is really starting to look like a proper rally track. So let's get somebody professional out there to test it. Okay. So the first part of the build's finished and all I need you to do is go check out the cambers and the contours and just give some feedback of what you think of the track and then depending on what sort of your expert opinion is we might end up changing it a little bit okay so crack on fast as you can tell me what you think Drive accordingly, that's what you've got to do. You've got to change your mannerisms to sort of like evaluate the sort of contours of the land. Yeah? Basically just drive up there. Yeah, pretty much. Right. <laughs> Try and take from the outside, hit the apex, sort of mid corner, hold your speed and then try and use all the momentum of the corner to help you get a good exit speed so you get good drive down the next straight. Oh, scared! What do you reckon then? There was a massive step, wasn't there? Dada. There was a massive step, yeah. Dada. But there's there also ruts. now two massive holes <laughs> and a massive pile of mud Dada. and no step. There ain't a lot gone on for a day's work, is there? <laughs> two days. <laughs> the angle that GoPro's getting is gonna have to be for fans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
I can smell the motor from here. Get lost. What went wrong? I think she's used it that much today. It's run out of battery. Really? Yeah. Oh. Kurt has gone home and it's the end of day three. It took way more time than we thought it would. It's looking amazing to be fair. The downside is it's this sort of thing. Like it's still squidgy as you can see, but there's way too many bumps still. And this, like it's just gonna pull the tire off on a car. But I have a solution. This is my roller. I bought this dinosaur about a year ago with a plan to smooth out the track. It didn't work. If the ground was too soft, it picked up the dirt and destroyed the track. And if it was too hard, it did nothing at all. Now it's been sat there for a whole winter, so it probably doesn't run. But I think today with the current track conditions, it could be absolutely perfect. So let's see if somehow we can get this thing running. Right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely gonna have no power. What the heck? Imagine if this starts. This might just be the most reliable thing I've got. Right, that's a lot better. Look at that. So that's taken all those little bits out. It's still not, still not perfect. It needs loads and loads of times over it, but it's way, way better, way better. So now this initial track is much wider and hopefully smooth enough for the first time to test an actual car. And of course, it has to be my beloved Subaru. This poor car has had a rough life. Sounds a bit rusty. Right then, are you excited? I am excited. It looks unbelievable from here. Oh wow. Ribs are killing me, no excuses. time we finish this, imagine the playground, the rally track. This is going to be unbelievable. Moving on to the next part of track one, we now need to widen this corner to have a much better run up to this jump. We also need to reduce the steep takeoff angle of these two jumps. Currently, they are way too aggressive for a normal car. And then just a bit more widening of the track between these two jumps. For this straight, it should be fairly easy. We need to remove the top layer to make it super smooth and then compact it by tracking over in the heavy digger. Everything was looking good, but we hit some more problems. We've got, Wrong. it's overheating and a diesel leak. Is it permanently broken or just temporarily broken? Just, just temporary. She'll be back up and running in no time. Is that like no time like you were going to finish that corner? It took you three days. <laughs> no comment. I can't talk to you when you like this. Don't ring me unless you've got good news. Okay. So after a bit of fiddling, Kurt managed to get the digger up and running again, but it was still overheating. Whee. And we've also got another problem. We had a fresh catastrophic oil leak on my ancient roller. Uh, we've got some more good news. Got an oil leak on your roller. I can't leave you there for one minute. I don't know, we've done an hour or so. You broke the digger and the roller. Both, yeah. So I'll get me shovel and me rake out. Do you remember the comment, only ring me when you've got good news? I remember that. With the roller running low on oil and the digger overheating, we had no time to get the fix. So we decided to gamble and just try and carry on. Right, so I left work at seven and it is now six. So 11 hour shift. Is it finished yet? It doesn't look like I've done a fat lot, but I've had to dig it out. No, you're right, it doesn't. Day four of the track build now, and progress is absolutely flying. Until Kurt said he needed something really important from us. Gonna need fuel at some point. She's running a little low. Should we go get that? Yeah, we can do that. We That's can our contribution. Well. Yeah. Response unit. What do you want to call him? Um, Daisy the Wiggly Worm. Daisy the Wiggly Worm. <laughs> That's a cool name, isn't it? Daddy, how are we going to show mummy? Yeah. Just trod on his mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big part of the day, isn't it? Well, we're helping him because, like, without this, he couldn't do anything. This is the this is the major part. Do you reckon if we got him V power, he'd go faster? Should we get V power? I never get V power. Does he need any ad blue? Oh no, that's for diesel so <laughs> Yeah. Right, all loaded up. V power. See if we go a bit quicker. What's that smell? Petrol. Yeah. 
petrol. It's, yeah, it's, it's um, Kurt's super unleaded. We've got your fuel. Yeah. We've gone all in and got your super unleaded. Uh, diesel, pal. What? Diesel, the diggers. Not petrol. Right, let's try again. You think you'd have said diesel, wouldn't you? Uh, See, he just said we diesel. Oh, no, it's petrol. petrol. Is it petrol, sir? Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. Now Kurt has fresh diesel, progress is absolutely flying. Until. And just as we were getting there, the heavens have opened. It's wet, we're cancelled. None of, nothing else to say. Not happy, Bunny. So we lost another two days, but eventually the weather forecast is finally looking good for the next few days. Let's get cracking and push to finish track one. Firstly, reduce the takeoff angle of even more jumps. Soften the kicker to make them more suitable for a car, although jump and car probably shouldn't be in the same sentence. A bit more filling in the ruts to make smooth and a bit more widening to accommodate a normal car. And finally, angle the steep edges to make sure safe to mow. So after two weeks, track one is finally complete. With track one finished, we can move on to track two and three. There are a couple of problems, however, we need to solve first, starting with this one. So this is the worst corner at the whole track and probably one of the most used. So whenever it rains, there's an issue. Now, I personally think that somewhere here is a land drain, which is broke. This is pretty much identical to what we had on track one. Potentially the very old underground land drains may be broken here as well. Kurt reckons we could replace them. So then any water that does sit in the ground is gonna go eventually into your pipe and slowly disperse its way off. Now, the problem is with Kurt's lack of optimism. Would that 100% fix it? But also the fact is that would be very expensive. I think we gamble again and build up the soil level and angle it to have a slope for the water to naturally drain to the lower level off the actual track. Next thing to do is we actually need to change the layout of the track. So this is where we need that track change and it's quite simple. It's just too tight in a car. It's just gonna damage everything. Like this corner's super tight and that corner there is horrendous. So, Here's the plan. We're going to add a very technical S-bend. And if done right, this could be the best corner of the track. Because track one took way too long to complete, we've come up with a plan to speed up this gigantic build. We have gone double the labor and double the diggers. So I want to just introduce you to a new member of the team. This is Grant. And just like Kurt, he has 10 years experience of diggering. However, there is one main difference between the two. Grant's got a much bigger one. So we're in the 14 ton today. So with Grant's bigger digger and Kurt's smaller one, work began. In the meantime, I thought I'd get the buggy out to show you just how much damage it does to the smoothness of the track. So these are the track wreckers. Imagine four wheel drive in a thousand cc and in a couple of laps, I'll show you just how much dirt this thing moves. I thought I was gonna miss racing this year, but actually I've enjoyed doing these YouTube videos so much, it's not been too bad. Of course, I've missed my friends and all the laugh we had there, but sometimes you have to move on this is for sale by the way 20 grand gives a shout on instagram because this might be the last ever time i ever drive a side by side i've had some massive crashes off this stuff Should we see what the condition the track is then after the first yeah. few laps? That's the trouble which we have is that sort of like how much roost. Like this was green a minute ago. This will give you an idea of how much this shifts. <laughs> I literally put that down before we went out. This was so much fun. It was amazing. But what really ended it for me was um, the guy used to run it, Martin. He was like a second dad to me. Uh, he passed away and my dad passed away the week after. So since that day, I've uh, never raced since then. So um, 
yeah, another good reason to sort of like um, call it a day. With both Grant and Kurt working for a full eight hours, we went to check on their progress. You ready for this? Yeah. Turn yourself round. Whoa. What a difference a day makes. This is what it's like. Two people, a big machine. Like, this is unbelievable. With less work to do on these tracks, after a couple of days, the lads had the entire track two and three finished. What they've done is absolutely amazing. Like, this is next level. Perfect for the car. So with the next stage finished, it's time to get the health and safety inspector back out to test it. Go! She's a lucky girl, isn't she? I would have loved something like that when I was a kid. Turn the music on. Look where you're going! Help! Right, so what do you think to the track, mate? Poo-poo-y. poo, -poo -y. poo, -poo -y. Yeah. Is it not good? No. Why not? With Senna's helpful feedback, it's time to go check in on Kurt. Like with this progress, like that field, although that's a bit of a bugger, we should hopefully get done if the weather's good. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a little spanner in the works. Um, I'm gonna to have to pull off for a few weeks, just cause we've had a lad take a tumble off a scaffold. Um, he's not in for a few weeks. So I've got to then go and replace him. And I'm not gonna be able to get back here for possibly two weeks. Weather dependent, obviously. So you might even be longer than that. I could be, yeah. I could be. With Kurt not being able to help out anymore, things soon got worse. We lost a full 10 days due to bad weather. So yet again, we're going to lose another day. And that's really worrying because I'm not sure how long this summer's going to last. That leaves only four days to our safety weather window of the start of September. It was looking impossible to finish this build before the winter comes. But we have a solution. Meet the new team. This is Connor. He has 12 years experience of diggering. This is Charlie and he has five years of the diggering game and you already know Grant. And we've even got a new bit of kit which has been kindly donated by Midlands JCB. Even JCB want us to get this track finished. Come on weather, stay with us. JCB. So the only chance we have of getting this done is to up our manpower. We've gone from one digger to four diggers. Four times the expense, but four times quicker. Look at the weather report. We have an eight day window. 27, 27, 27, 26, 25. Get the suntan lotion lads, but hurry the f up. <laughs> the layout of track four is fairly simple. We're going to have a super fast long straight coming out of the initial track one. Some nice flowing bends and then a super smooth approach to Storato jump. Then one more straight to link up back into track two. And finally, the entrance here with this jump needs to be shallowed out. And this is the final piece of the puzzle to link this gigantic project up. With Connor, Grant and Charlie all working on track four, progress is finally flying. After two days of great work, Connor had to leave to go to a different job. And with only two days left, we are running out of time fast. So we had to make a bit of a change. So this is have to gonna be our compromise. So you can see where the digger is now. And then we're gonna come straight down here on the off camber, do a turn there and then it's finished back onto the other track. The corner we missed now adds super deep ruts and to move the dirt and fill them in would have been very time consuming. A bit of a compromise, but this is the only way to get this project finished on time. This gigantic project took five weeks, five diggers, and unfortunately 12,000 pounds to complete. It cost more than three times my estimate, but it's made an epic location to film in 2024. <laughs> Ready? It's only finished. <laughs> With the track finally finished, it's time to see what it's like and put it to the test. So there's only one car really to test on this track and to be fair, Ken Block would have loved to have gone around this track. We've got a mile of beautiful prepared track which has took us about three months <laughs> and cost a fortune. <laughs>
Brilliant experience, absolutely. Everything's just like, it's like in fast forward, isn't it? Yeah, and everything's like, really... You just, you don't know what to press first and pull first. <laughs> just amazing, just so blessed and so amazing to be. Yeah, I'm getting emotional now because it's unbelievable. Right, that's it. Track complete. Roll on 2024. We need the spring gear. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. I know it's a little bit different, but track build, wow, well, what, what a course. But it was definitely all worth it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. That buggy track was like just annihilated, wasn't it? Just, yeah. And it was just a wasted space. But now we get to have an amazing time and not break anything as much. <laughs> <laughs> as well, yeah. <laughs> right. See you next Tuesday, 6 p.m.